Hello, welcome to our Surette battery training webinar series. I want to thank everybody for watching. I appreciate your attendance. If you like this video, let us know. Um, make a comment, send us an email, make a like, let us know. If you don't like this video, you are also welcome to let us know. But instead of just hitting the dislike button, post a comment or send us an email either at steve at surette.com or support at rollsbattery.com and let us know what you didn't like about this video so we can make these videos better for everybody in the future. So today we're going to talk, talk about a couple of new products uh, that, we're, that we're releasing this year or 2019. Uh, the first has already been released. Uh, it's called Advanced NAM. Basically it's a carbon additive that we've that we've added to all of our Series 4500 and Series 5000 batteries. Uh, the second battery that we are going to talk about is our lithium iron phosphate battery uh, that is going to start shipping in September of 2019. My name is Steve Higgins. Uh, I'm the Technical Services Manager of the Rolls Battery. Uh, my contact information is steve at surette.com. That's my email address. Uh, here's my contact, other contact information. Uh, if you don't want to post it to the any comments to the YouTube site, uh, you can send me a comment or a question directly to my email address. That's the best way to get a hold of me, and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions for you. A little bit about Rolls batteries, or actually Surette batteries. Surette battery is the name of the company, um, and Rolls is the brand. So uh, we've been we've been manufacturing most of our batteries in Spring Hill, Nova Scotia uh, since the 1959. Uh, generally we manufacture flooded lead acid batteries, uh, AGM batteries and gel batteries for renewable energy, marine, motive power and railroad applications. Um, we've been doing it since the uh, since the late late 50s and we can will continue to go on, move on. Um, our, we do have training materials, uh, training presentations, reference materials are all available on a share drive uh, via Google Drive. Here's the link to the uh, share drive or you can send an email request to steve at surette.com and I'll send you a link uh, you can just click on. Uh, we also have online webinars and uh, that are available on YouTube. Uh, there's currently about 23 videos available on the YouTube channel, but if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably already found them. So, uh, but for those of you who are just did a real quick search on this and found this, if you click on this YouTube.com link, uh, that'll take us take you to our channel. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today is the Advanced NAM. Uh, basically, what it is is it's a carbon additive with a few other little things, uh, preparatory things that. Uh, that we've done with uh, the carbon. Um, what it does is, is, is it increases some of the benefits is it increases the charge acceptance of the battery uh, and we get a higher charging efficiency. Um, a typical flooded lead antimony battery, when you get to the absorption charge, your, uh, your battery state of charge is roughly around 80 to 85% state of charge. On the advanced NAM, it's about 90%, maybe 92%, depending on the temperature uh, for state of charge. So it's uh, it it gets to that higher point faster, which will eventually shorten your absorption times. Uh, something to consider when you're putting in an advanced NAM battery: uh, set your absorption times as normal, like we suggest in the manual on page 10. Uh, the 0.42 multiplied by the C20 rate divided by the nominal charging current. Uh, set your absorption times to what that formula comes out as and then reduce it over time based on what your specific gravities are. Uh, that'll help you activate the battery faster and more efficiently uh, and also give you a, a higher uh, capacity. Um, one of the nice things about the advanced NAM is that the partial state of charge operation with little or no adverse sulfation effects. Uh, what that means is is that sulfation uh, is very difficult for it to attach and stay attached to the plates. Uh, we're currently on about on our seventh year of testing. Uh, we have a few sets of batteries out there for testing currently, and uh, what's going up? You know, that's we've been testing them for almost seven years now. We're over four thousand cycles, 
and the, the batteries are still at 110% plus capacity. Uh, so we're not seeing the partial state of charge issues. Some of the limitations um, on these batteries, like anything, uh, they're easy to cost compare to some, some of our competitors. So sometimes you can see that cost comparison and, uh, and ours will seem more expensive than other comp competitions, than our competitions. Um, they are flooded lead acid batteries, so they do require flooded lead acid battery maintenance. You need to top off the water, you need to check the specific gravities, and you need to do that generally for the first year about once a month. And then after that, you need to do it at least a quarter to make sure that once a quarter to make sure that you're properly charging those batteries. Um, the wired connections, um, you know, typically with our series 5,000 batteries and even some of the series 4,000, it could be challenging to put bus bars on them. You can adapt them to bus bars, but you've got to have all the measurements ahead of time to be able to order them. Um, the one issue with uh, with uh, carbon-based batteries or this advanced NAND battery is its increased self-discharge. A standard lead antimony battery has a self-discharge rate of about 10% per month at 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. This particular battery with the advanced NAM, you're going to see 20 to 25% self-discharge every month at 25 degrees C. That's going to increase with the hotter temperatures and it's going to decrease with colder temperatures. So if you order a container of batteries and you're shipping them to uh, Nigeria or you're shipping them to somewhere in Latin America where they're going to spend a lot of time on a container ship, it's a good chance that you're going to have to boost those batteries as soon as they get off the container ship. So a couple of comparisons. Here's the spec sheet or the, the highlights for the uh, Series 4500 battery. Basically, it's an L16 battery with a CS plate in it. Uh, the Series 4500 came in two styles, the 2-volt L16 and the 6-volt L16. Um, that, that featured a larger plate construction. Uh, those batteries were rated at about a little over 2,700 cycles at 50% depth of discharge. If you extrapolate that over, over usage and you assume the customer has been doing 220 cycles a year, uh, basically not cycling every day, but cycling about three quarters of the year, uh, you're looking at roughly about 12 years of operation on those batteries uh, for a max bank, max capacity of 3,100 amp hours. Um, the new series 4500s with the advanced NAM, um, your cycle life goes from 2,700 to almost 3,800 cycles. Again, that bumps your site, your overall year, your overall usage to uh, just around 17 years of operation. Um, again, 15% quicker and more efficient charging. Uh, it's gonna be a, a game changer uh, for this particular battery. Um, on the Series 5000s, we were typically seeing about 3,200 cycles on those at 50% the depth of discharge. You know, average life on those batteries was 10 to 15 years, realistically about four, 14 and a half years at that 220 cycles per year at 25 degrees C. Um, the Series 5000 batteries now, you're looking at almost 4,500 cycles, so 4,400 4, cycles plus. Um, that gives you about 20 years of operational life on the Series 5000 batteries. So one of the things that we were able to do with the Series 4500s and the Series 5000s with this advanced NAM is we were we were able to to produce and ship these and manufacture these. There has been no. This is being recorded on uh, July 19, 2019, about a month and a half after we started shipping these batteries. Uh, we have not increased prices on these batteries. So the price uh, on March is the same and it is in May 1st. So um, that's one of the things that we were actually excited that we were able to do this without actually increasing cost. The next battery we're gonna talk about, or batteries, are our new lithium batteries. Um, one of the things that's been absent from our shows for the last few years is one, because we've been working on it, two, because we weren't 100% sold on it, was the lithium iron phosphate. Um, we looked at lithium ion, we looked at lithium cobalt, we looked at lithium manganese. Unfortunately, those three chemistries, and there's still there, there's some that are mixed, there's a few more than just those three, but 
those lithium based chemistries we found that were just too volatile um, uh, to be putting into an installation such as this that wasn't being monitored continuously. Um, so what we what we what we did is we we manuf we were manufacturing two batteries, uh, the lithium their LifePo four or lithium iron phosphate. Um, we have two types. We have a 24 volt model and a 48 volt model. The 24 volt model is the S242800 LFP, and then the 48 volt model is the S48 6650 LFP. Um, the 24 volt model, that's uh, 2.8 kilowatt hours of storage. That battery is IEC 62133. It is UL 2271, UL 1973, and it has a UN uh, 38.3 rating. Uh, the chassis is IP55 rated, uh, so you know it's gonna, it's not, it's not. You can't submerge it, but it, it can take a little bit of uh, a little bit of punishment. Um, it is a 110 amp hour battery at 24 volts. Uh, you can connect up to 20 in parallel. You cannot connect these in series. If you connect them in series, you're going to cause problems with the BMS. Uh, and then, of course, we'll void your warranty. Um, so if you need a 48 volt module, you need to buy the 48 volt module. Um, it's, just the, it's just the way that lithium batteries work when you're dealing with the BMS, the battery management system. Peak current on this battery is uh, 300 amps of current for three seconds. Uh, if you exceed that, what will happen is, is it will either pop the internal fuse or the battery will shut off, depending on how heavy, what, what type of current that is. Um, warranty on this battery is 16 megawatt hours of usage. That's total throughput. Um, 16 megawatt hours of usage on these batteries is it's a little different than, than cycles. Uh, and with the BMS and being able to count uh, current in, current out, um, that would that uh, that allows us to, to to do warranty a little bit different on the battery. Each battery has an independent BMS for each module, and so what that means is is that when you put in five or six or seven parallel modules, uh, what will happen is each BMS is regulated through the module. Uh, independently and so and and if they're connected via the bus what you can what you'll get is you'll get balancing between the modules so you won't have to go back through and rebalance the modules the next one is the 48 volt module that's the s48 6650 lfp that is a 48 volt 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour of storage uh, it is also iec rated to 62133 uh, UL 2271, UL 1973, and UN 3803. It is also IP55 rated. This is a 130 amp hour battery at 48 volts. Again, 20 of them can be connected in parallel with a peak current of 300 amps DC. Uh, the warranty on this one is 38 megawatt hours of throughput. And of course, it, it still has the independent BMS for each module. Some of the benefits for these batteries is they can be charged and discharged at the C1 rate all day long. And so 110 or 130 amps in, 110, 130 amps out, uh, you can keep cycling that way. Of course, that does increase your cycle rate and that does increase how much you're using the battery. So you want to just be, be aware of that. Um, higher charge acceptance than over lead acid batteries. Uh, when these things, when uh, these AGMs, these lithium ions, uh, when you finish the absorption or when you finish the bulk stage, you're at about 95% state of charge. So absorption time is limited. What that does is it reduces the amount of time, especially if you're running a generator to charge your battery, uh, or even if you've got a solar array, it increases your overall charging efficient, efficiency. Um, no partial state of charge effects um, whatsoever. You can charge and discharge 5, 10, 5, 10 percent one day, 60, 70 percent the next day, 5, 10 percent the next day. You're not going to have a partial state of charge operation like you would with the lead acid antimony battery. Um, again, the warranty is uh, 16 megawatt hours for the 24 volt model and 38 megawatt hours for the for the 48 volt model with a 60 percent in the life cap. Some of the limitations on the lithium iron phosphate batteries, 
Um, higher cost per kilowatt. Uh, that's the biggest limitation, really. Um, when you're looking at uh, when you're looking to cost compare, you know, 100 to 300 dollars a kilowatt hour on some of the lead antimony type batteries. Uh, that's a easier pill to swallow for most most customers, um, especially out of the gate when you're paying. You know, ten or twelve thousand dollars for the for the lead acid battery bank and the same equivalent lithium battery banks in the the the, the twenty eight to thirty five thousand dollar cost range. Uh, that can be pretty uh, pretty big pill to swallow for most customers. Um, so the estimated cost per kilowatt hours. Sorry about that. It's going to be right around eleven eleven hundred dollars per kilowatt hour. Um, uh, versus versus like a lead battery that's in the 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 100 to 300 dollars per kilowatt hour range um something the other consider to consider about these batteries is the charge temperatures when it comes to a lithium battery you've got to be very careful about how you're charging that battery and when you are charging that battery um, the charge temperatures in these batteries when you're when you're charging them is 0 C to 45 degrees Celsius. What that means is is that if your battery is negative if your battery temperature is negative 5 C and you're trying to charge the battery in the middle of winter, middle of winter you're going to have a problem getting that battery except in the charge. The same thing with those of you in the southwest United States or or in the Caribbean or a hot location if your battery temperature is above 45 degrees Celsius and you're trying to charge it, it's not going to accept a charge. It's going to shut off. Um, unlike a, uh, a, a lead acid battery that doesn't have an on off switch, this battery does and it will shut off to protect itself. So if I pop open the manual, um, so I'll pop open the manual and I'm going to scroll up here to the, uh, to the operation. Uh, by the way, the manual there's going to be there's a link in the on this on this YouTube site. There is a link for the manual. There's also a link for uh, the spec sheets, the individual spec sheets, and so I've linked those on the YouTube description. Uh, so for this particular manual, continuous uh, charge output, the 24 volt model, is is at the 110 amps DC. Uh, charge voltage is 27.2 and 54.4 for the 48 volt model. Uh, charge temperature, operating temperature is 22 volts. To, uh, operating voltage is 22 volts to 29, or 44.8 volts to 58.4 volts. Uh, while charge temperature, if you are charging the batteries, 0 C to 45 C is your maximum. Those are your limitations. Uh, you will not be able to to charge these batteries outside of those numbers. Discharging can be negative 20 to 50 degrees C to 50 degrees C, but again, if you're outside those charge temperature parameters and you discharge the battery, you're gonna to have to warm the battery up, uh, especially if it's cold, or cool the battery down to get it to accept the charge. So you've got to be careful with that. Uh, that's basically with all lithium batteries. Um, and so uh, again, I have these linked in the descriptions uh, below the bottom of this video. There's descriptions, and I have the spec sheets for, for, the, for the two batteries linked, along with the operating manual that gives you more detailed information about the battery. So at this point, uh, if we don't have any questions, uh, I want to say thank you for listening. Again, my name is Steve Higgins. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to send me an email, steve at sorette.com. I'll be more than happy to do what I can to take care of you. Um, uh, again, if you like this video, uh, we love likes. Uh, if you dislike this video, uh, go ahead and dislike it. Go ahead and click the dislike button. But hey, hey, send me a message. Send us a message and let us know what we did wrong, what you didn't like, so we can see if we can try to correct that. Uh, anyways, you have a good day. Thanks for watching.